So could we start? Yes, actually I wanted to use my own uh, uh, PowerPoint. I mean, I, okay. I, I can share, yes, share my screen later. Yes, later, right? So yes, we all ready yes. online. Здравствуйте еще раз всем, добрый вечер. Меня зовут Джилдис, как я уже ранее представлялась, давайте еще раз. Меня зовут Джилдис Тигизбекова, я являюсь доцентом Международного университета Волотов. И сегодня у нас день, который посвящен праву в эпоху цифровизации и новых технологий. И сейчас идет последняя часть сегодняшнего дня, она будет об интервью, то есть она называется интервью. Интервью с нашим респондентом, и у нас на связи Амар Юнас, он а, является главой такого интересного, замечательного проекта, как Digital and Tech Law in Central Asia, то есть это цифровое технологическое, техническое право в Центральной Азии. Да? А на сегодняшний день Амар находится в Узбекистане. А, хотелось бы отметить, что Амар является первым гражданином Пакистана, который получил а, юридическое образование в Кыргызстане. Он, он был пионером, да? А, он получил юридическое образование в Кыргызстане, далее а, учился и преподавал, работал в Китае. На сегодняшний день он является, а, работает в Эсминстерском университете в Ташкенте. И мы очень рады, что Амар с нами. А, наше интервью будет проходить на английском и русском языках. Здравствуйте, Амар. Да, здравствуйте, спасибо, Джилдис. Я очень рад видеть вас, и я следил за другими сессиями. Все утра вижу. И спасибо организаторам за приглашение. Как вы говорили, я тоже горжусь тем, что учился в Киргизстане. Сегодня я очень рад видеть, что Киргизстан выносит большой вклад в развитие и продвижение цифрового права в этом регионе. Перед интервью у меня есть небольшая презентация. С вашего позволения я хочу выступить на английском языке, потому что тут есть некоторые термины, которые трудно перевести на русском языке. Но потом я постараюсь ответить на вопросы на русском языке. А Марк, у вас прекрасный русский Тут есть там научные терминологии, которые я сейчас не хочу рисковать, потому что это только начало цифрового права в этом регионе, и люди, наверное, ничего не то поймут, поэтому. Да, хорошо. Если у кого-то будут вопросы, вы можете их писать на любом языке, на русском, кыргызском, английском. Мы на все вопросы постараемся ответить. Может, можете задавать вопрос Амару, мне. В течение следующих 10 минут Амар хочет показать презентацию о развитии вообще цифрового и технологического права в Центральной Азии. А далее мы перейдем к вопросам и ответам. Видно, да? Сейчас. Да, да, да. Хорошо. So, uh, digital law is comparatively a new area of legal sciences in this region. And uh, unfortunately, uh, it was not a legal debate before this forum. It was a policy debate and people were talking about uh, digitalization in Central Asia. Uh, I have seen only one study. It is uh, by World Bank. Uh, study was uh, done in 2016. They, they presented this in Kazakhstan in a conference where they talk about uh, digital dividends. So digital dividends are actually the impact of technology on people's life. So it was the very first time when someone empirically described how technology is influencing the lives of people in Central Asian region. There are individual studies as well, but this is the, this is the only uh, study and uh, one of the biggest studies which have been done on this region as a whole. Uh, this thing we already know, it is a smart, country, smart city and safe city projects. All the Central Asian countries, they have a smart city or safe city project. In Kyrgyzstan, uh, we have this uh, safe city project. Recently, you have installed cameras everywhere. And e-government projects are also there in Central Asia everywhere. Uh, so e-government projects, basically, they are related to accessibility of services. 
government is trying to digitalize all the services so that the individuals can uh, you know come out of their uh, traditional comfort zone and can utilize these uh, technologies uh, everywhere wherever they go so almost all the major uh, governmental services have been digitalized in all the central asian countries but this is the today's topic which is the emerging case laws uh, I would like to highlight some of the areas where we need to improve, I mean, Central Asian region as a whole. So the first area is related to the digital content. It is a new category of product. Previously, we know we have physical goods and services. We are dealing in physical goods and we are dealing in services. Now this new category has emerged. It is called as uh, digital content. So what is digital content? Digital content is basically everything what is available on internet in the form of uh, uh, music or movies or software programs, computer programs, whatever you see, uh, they are called as the digital content. So buying and selling of digital content is happening, but unfortunately there are not many laws in this region to regulate this buying and selling of uh, digital content. Uh, in relation to digital content, there is a new category of contract is emerging. The contract law need to be revised in this region. We have, uh, uh, you know, Smeshini Dagawara, but uh, with the uh, emergence of this digital content, we have to think, rethink these uh, Smeshini Dagawara and the mixed contract, because this is a completely new category that how you can do buying and selling of digital content and how you will record the buying and selling of these things. Uh, medical technologies and legal challenges, many my colleagues in uh, Central Asia and all over the world, they don't think that medical technologies are the subject matter of technology law. But uh, I strongly believe that everything where there are elements of automation or uh, where there are some elements of digitalization, they are the subject matter of technology law. So there are so many medical technologies which are emerging, which are already being used, and there are no regulations. A little example can be this. We have been doing buying and selling of artificial teeth in our medical universities. We have these skeletons, people are buying and selling the hair extension, human hair extensions. And uh, you know, people are donating blood, people are buying and selling the blood. Uh, there are very less laws available when it comes to the buying and selling of human organs. Uh, interestingly, Turkmenistan is a country in the region who has this uh, full-fledged law on the blood donation. But it has become the classic of uh, medical law. This is something very interesting and emerging, which is 3D printed body parts. So what are the 3D printed body parts? They take uh, a stem cell from your body and then they can uh, make a full organ out of this cell. Now, this research is happening in Central Asia. This research is following international standardization, I hope. But in future, we need to think about the laws to regulate uh, you know, the product of these technologies. People will start doing buying and selling of 3D printed body organs. Uh, so this is a time to think about the regulations related to these. This is something which is already happening, which is autonomous robotic surgery. A small example can be in uh, almost all the big cities of Central Asia, there are uh, doctors, I mean, uh, who are using these robots in certain capacity. Uh, one of the example is this uh, LASIK surgery. What is this? They use this robot uh, to do the correction of your eyesight. So this, uh, this robot has uh, more function than a doctor, means the doctor is a kind of uh, observer or sit passively and robot does it by itself. Uh, there are so many liabilities issues related to this. Technology has been transferred. Technology has been uh, used from previous two decades. But uh, uh, when it comes to the liability issues, there are very less laws related to autonomous uh, robotic surgery. So we need to think about this. This is the uh, classic of technology law, I would say, the intellectual property laws. And in the morning, I was listening to the colleagues, very interesting debates were happening related to the IP law. Uh, this is something which is very interesting, which is called as autonomous output of AI. And you asked the question from the representative of Kyrgyz patent also. Uh, what is autonomous output of AI? It is uh, the uh, robot generated work. Previously, there was something which was called as computer generated work. 
so the human involvement was very high in those computer generated works but when it comes to the autonomous autonomous output of ai the uh, human involvement is uh, very very less so the question arises that who will be the owner if uh, an autonomous robot produce uh, a work maybe a work of art or or maybe uh, a movie or writes a novel or or something else uh, one of uh, the emerging areas in which we have to think about the intellectual property and the liabilities issue it is uh, it is the autonomous uh, automobiles we are very close to you know uh introduce these cars who can drive uh, by itself self driving cars so the time has come that the region should think about uh, making laws when it comes to the autonomous output of ai this is an area which is called as ip audit so what is ip audit like we have financial audit we have uh, environmental audit like uh, how much a company is leaving the carbon footprint on this planet this is the environmental audit and uh, financial audit we all know that companies uh, they do these financial audits so similarly we have uh, this ip audit to audit the intellectual property assets of a company uh there are not many laws available some law firms are doing this in this region mostly they are using the international standards uh but they are unable to contextualize it with the region so there is a need to regulate this area as well that how you calculate or how you audit the intellectual property assets of the companies in this region central asia this is the debate very interesting debate happening everywhere almost all the central asian countries are concerned about it it is about the facial recognition technologies or the camera which has been installed our surveillance systems uh, some people have reservations on it they say that uh, our privacy will be compromised because uh, all the countries they have uh, imported these cameras from china and uh, kyrgyzstan has imported has bought these from huawei so there is a debate that are we willing to compromise on our privacy on the cost of security do we need security or we more care more about privacy so if you if you compromise on uh, on uh, privacy you can get security but if you if you need security you have to compromise on privacy and there are some uh, human right enthusiasts uh who are you know saying that these these things are not good and a, a very interesting debate is happening today on on social media in kyrgyzstan about the new project it is also kind of extension of uh, something uh, which we we can say that a surveillance system anyways when it comes to the autonomous output of ai as our colleagues were mentioning in the in the morning that uh, the legal persons and the natural persons they are the owner of intellectual property so uh, what if a robot produce something how to accommodate this into our legal system so for this purpose some countries have introduced the phenomena of digital personhood or legal personality so there can be there can be a physical person and legal person and then there can be a digital person so autonomous output of artificial intelligence can be you know related to 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 the digital personhood so we can have a uh, uh, you know a natural person and then legal person and then the digital persons and anything related to digitalization can can be related to these uh, digital persons in the long run this is something which we can think about smart contract uh we already listened about the blockchain based smart contract also there are so many debates in this region uh because our traditional contracts are very flexible but smart contracts are very rigid you have to ensure the 100% execution of the terms uh in order to you know complete this uh, contract uh for small and medium sized business it is not possible to install these blockchain based contracts uh, and they play on this flexibility principle means if a contract is flexible they they feel that it is more beneficial for them i am talking about small and medium sized businesses so we have to take in confidence our populate uh, that these uh, blockchain technologies are uh, going to be beneficial for them and for this purpose we need uh, you know so many things to do before before installing these blockchain based technologies uh, it is it is uh, the question of resources as well so 
uh, internet of thought it is related to the 5g technology uh, some countries have already experimented with 5g technologies some some countries they have launched in this region so what is the use of 5g technology 5g can be installed in uh, everything so all the things they will be connected to each other via 5g and uh, they can communicate with each other so there there can be you know you, many conflicts among the things which are using these 5g technologies and uh, then there will be issues related to the you know liability contract tort agency uh, you know and so on so we need to think about this also because we are already doing experiments with the 5g technology gil this uh, this is your area uh, the 5g technology uh, th th this is just an example that how this 5g technology uh, stands at the junction of so many other areas of legal sciences for example uh, uh, this is a 5g kit skyship so this flies in the outer space and it uh, sends the signal uh now uh, obviously none of our central asian countries are technologically that advanced to afford this technology but this can be foreseen uh so this intersect plenty of other areas for example privacy is compromised uh, aviation law is involved uh, uh and 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 and, and uh, th this is something which is coming this is not a uh, sci-fi this is uh, coming in next couple of years so we need to regulate it or at least we need to have our own internal regulations when uh, uh, an outside mobile phone company or telephone operator offers these kind of technologies to our government uh, this is uh, even advanced science uh, the 6g technology and quantum computing so we are thinking about 5g technology and people are experimenting with 6g technology and when the 6g technology will mix with quantum computing there will be another boom of technology so i don't want to go into the details of these technologies but this is something which we should keep in mind augmented reality in central asia is becoming reality people are actually using there are different projects for example in kyrgyzstan i saw this that kyrgyz culture via augmented reality you can wear these glasses and you can see things happening and uh, to some extent they look very real google glasses are coming into the market so not many regulations are there and this is something which our neighboring country kazakhstan has done recently so what happened in kazakhstan a korean company organized a meeting uh, you know of a mother with with her dead dead baby uh, and uh, many people many people are uh, you know saying that it is not good we we shouldn't use technology for these types of things because uh, uh, when you start organizing meeting with your dead relatives or uh, i don't know with someone else uh, there can be so many uh, you know emotions involved and uh, different people will pursue it differently so at least we should have some some basic rules and regulations for experimenting with these technologies this is uh, uh, about to happen in central asia because uh, one of uh, uh, the software houses approach me to to get my consultancy on these issues uh, so so what is this this is a game it is called as second life there are others also available these are virtual worlds so you can install this game and you can make your own avatar so in this life you are a professor in the other life or inside the game you can be a musician you can be a constructor so you can construct a house you can be a painter you can paint something then you can do buying and selling of those things which you have made means you owe property you can do buying and selling to the other avatars or the other people inside the game now there have been some cases related to the ip infringement uh, you know uh, property grabbing and so on and people actually went to the real court means one avatar made a building and the other other avatar in the uh, you know in this game uh, copied this this building and those original persons they went to the original court so so th this is something which is happening and uh, which requires our attention as legal scientists then we talk about e-commerce especially the covid 19 everything has become uh, you know the subject of uh, electronic commerce there are so many business models available based on the 
types of participants based on the goods and based, based on how you do the delivery or the other supply chain uh, components. So you can just multiply these, these participants with goods and with business models. So you have number of e-commerce models and uh, uh, all of these e-commerce models, they have their different uh, legal issues. Uh, when it comes to the payment, all the countries in Central Asia, they have their own digital payment systems. Uh, but uh, the regulation is uh, is something which is uh, very contextualized with the region when it comes to the international transactions. There are not many rules and regulations. Uh, mostly you can do the payment, you can move the money inside the country, not outside the country. Uh, but like previously we had checks which used to bounce. Uh, similarly, when you pay by internet, by using these mobile applications, all the banks, they have their mobile applications. There can be so many issues and they should be dealt at state level. I mean, we cannot leave it on internal regulations of the banks. We should, we should uh, you know, uh, supervise this process at state level. This is, uh, this is again your area, the drone laws in Central Asia, you cannot bring drones on, on airport, you will be stopped. But uh, this is a, the reality that actually drones are an important, important uh, you know, instrument when we talk about the supply chain. Drones are being used for delivery, not only for spying, but they are bringing delivery, especially in the COVID-19 uh, times. Many countries uh, have used drones to supply different things, means food and medicine to the citizens. So it is better to, you know, uh, spend some time and come up with our own re regulations, which can go hand in hand with other laws such as aviation law. So I propose that uh, the Central Asia should have an AI policy. So AI is a technology policy. There should be a state level AI policy. We have digital policies and digital policies are basically about the accessibility. Uh, when it comes to the rules and regulations when it comes to the come to the making of uh, rules to regulate new technologies like digitalization we should have a centralized policy and uh, if we talk about policy challenges for digital transformation of this region there are there are two categories uh, i divide them into citizen oriented challenges the first is that uh, we need to do the capacity building uh, of our people, not all the people, less than 10% of the people in this region have access to internet. And then we have to take them into confidence when we talk about uh, privacy versus security as something which is happening today in uh, Kyrgyzstan, that if you will uh, do strict security, then you have to compromise on privacy. You, you should think that you need privacy or you need security. And uh, uh, the other thing is that on institutional level, uh, or maybe on state level, we need to, you know, uh, consider these things that data is vulnerable, data is the new oil, data is a commodity, people are buying and selling data, so data is very sensitive, how to, you know, manage the data, and inside Central Asia, people can uh, understand each other, but uh, there are many other people outside of Central Asia who are very much interested in Central Asian data. So there are cross-border digital security threats. Uh, when it comes to the compromisation or buying or selling of data with the outside actors, uh, there should be a law uh, at institutional level, I mean at the state level. And uh, I think that, which is, which is my theory, that we should see Central Asia as a, as a region uh, who could come up with own technology law because people are very much uh, similar to each, each other. Uh, the law is uh, pretty much same and uh, the post uh, communist uh, th uh, legal system, I mean, the ideological context also impact a lot when it comes to the making of new laws. We have, uh, we have seen in our practice that the countries with the colonial background or the countries with uh, communist background or the countries which are liberal or socialist, uh, their uh, legal progression is completely different. And uh, something which is very important uh, I, I want to uh, call upon this that we, we scholars need to you know, share ideas. So I propose that we should think about uh, making or introducing a Central Asia Tech Law Journal so that the 
technology law scholars from Central Asian regions could, uh, uh, you know, share their thoughts with each other. So by these small steps, hopefully in the future we will we will be, you know, one step more close to make our states digital states. Yes. Thank you very much. This is this is all for for the beginning, and now we can we can take questions. Yeah. Amar, thank you very much. You raised really very significant questions, which we have uh, currently in Central Asia. But I would like to summarize uh, your presentation. You know, I make notes for four pages during your presentation. So I would okay. like to just to translate your presentation in Russian language. Uh, it would be better for understanding for our uh, participants. Okay. Uh, участники, вы прослушали только что презентацию нашего замечательного спикера. Я бы очень хотела еще отметить, что Амар является еще врачом-доктором, поэтому он своей презентацией поднял такие вопросы именно робототехники в сфере хирургии, органы, новые виды органов, как продукция, да, то есть технологических органов. Поэтому, конечно, такие вопросы были также подняты. Что касается презентации нашего сегодняшнего спикера, то он указал в своей презентации, что то вообще цифровое право, технологическое право – это новые сферы, которые только развиваются в Центральной Азии. Я сделала записок, наверное, на четыре страницы, пока выступал наш спикер. Он поднял вопросы, что на сегодняшний день такие, что развивается в Центральной Азии, это смарт-сити, это умные города. Да? Кстати, последний год я работала в сфере именно урбанизации и устойчивого развития в городах непосредственно, да, то этот, конечно, вопрос, он тоже сейчас уже развивается во всех странах Центральной Азии. А, как а, также указал Амар, что проекты об электронном управлении сейчас внедрены во всех странах Центральной Азии, да, во всех сферах. И он поднимает такой вопрос, что законодатель Центральной Азии, его надо менять, оно должно быть более динамичным, более гибким, а, поскольку развивается электронная коммерция, да, то есть торговые сферы, они перешли, конечно, многие переходят в онлайн формат. Это касательно и услуг, это касается и непосредственно покупки и продажи продукции. И это, конечно, надо регулировать. Да. Амар еще поднял такие интересные, замечательные вопросы, как вообще перспективы развития в Центральной Азии непосредственно именно как body parts. I don't know how to translate it in Russian language. То есть как а, не, вот, технические, наверное, органы, да, которые, то есть, how can I translate it? I have no idea when in Russian. Yeah. Uh, 3D, 3D, uh, 3D, 3D <laughs> printed да? body part, 3D, да, ча часть тела. <laughs> части тела, <laughs> то есть да. uh, не трансплантация органов поднимает вопрос, а именно внедрение да, новых технологий, для функционирования организма человека, что это тоже должно являться видом продукции, и это тоже должно быть регулироваться на наших странах. Ама также очень интересно подняла вопросы именно участия новых технологий в хирургической сфере, да, вот в хирургии, что это должно внедряться, это должно и, конечно, обязательно регулироваться. Да. Были подняты вопросы искусственного интеллекта, особенно вот я видела фотографию, кто несет ответственность за искусственный интеллект, если искусственный интеллект совершает какие-то проступки или может, может совершить преступление. И вы показали пример Софии, да, которая был именно, да. А, то есть, да, робота, который уже официально получил а, гражданство, да, Арабских Эмиратов, это первый робот, который получил гражданство, да. А, Ауди, да, аудит, что проводился в электронном формате. И Амар поднял такой классный вопрос, именно камеры распознавания лиц, которые а, нач, уже внедряются в Китае. Это такой очень дебатный вопрос, мы тоже его изучали, мы тоже с прошлого года а, установили камеры распознавания лиц, и как это вообще, да, это общественность и частная жизнь, да, как это найти баланс между этим. А, очень хорошие вопросы. Далее вопросы правосубъектности в цифровом праве, digital personhood, <laughs> то есть может ли не физическое лицо являться субъектом именно или обладать правосубъектностью в цифровом праве, в интернет-пространстве. Амар также затронул вопросы именно вот, если говорить о перспективах, о визуальных играх, 
именно вот мне понравилось то, что вы отметили именно визуализация да, нереальной реальности. Yes. А, да, вот пример из Кореи, когда а, мама потеряла своего ребенка, да, и она сама попросила, она хотела вот последний раз хотя бы попрощаться с своей дочкой в визуальном таком мире. Конечно, было много дебатов, и как это будет, может, в будущем а, в наших странах, как это будет возможно с правовой точки, с моральной точки, да, это тоже такой большой и до сих пор открытый вопрос. Вы также подняли вопросы блокчейнов, технологии блокчейнов, гибкости традиционных контрактов, когда мы перейдем, наверное, на смарт-контракты, да, то есть из бумажных контрактов в электронные. Это тоже одна из перспектив, стоящая перед странами Центральной Азии. Вы подняли вопрос дронов, целости авиации. Дрон, дрон delivery, вот именно перевозка груза, а через дроны, это, конечно, вообще это супер идея, честно говоря, да, это я, например, в прошлом году преподавала этот предмет, а, ну, не в Кыргызстане, но это очень перспективная отрасль, особенно для таких малых стран, как Кыргызстан, это супер сфера, которую надо развивать, и это, конечно, это часть технологического права, и это тоже такой открытый вопрос, и это перспектива развития, потому что Могут только, да, это для шпионажа, для, для перевозки, для трансплантации органов, для перевозки медицины, особенно в период карантина и пандемии, это был бы очень оптимальным таким вариантом поиска решений. Да. Далее вы подняли вопросы, очень много вопросов, именно про политики развития искусственного интеллекта в Кыргызстане, какие есть перспективы развития политики в наших странах, в вопросах цифровой трансформации. И вот мне на самом деле понравились те моменты, которые вы подняли в своей презентации, что у нас есть проблема уязвимости персональных данных, да? что у нас проблема трансграничной кибербезопасности, и что для решения этих вопросов нужно достижение каких-то региональных правовых инструментов, необходимо нам, научному сообществу, тоже вместе работать, вместе сотрудничать, Создание журнала в эти сфере это тоже классная идея. Да. Давай это ви, ви, ви от э, этот имена Алато предлагает да. их. Да, вообще у нас есть даже такая идея открыть магистратуру по а, правы, сфере IT и права. Ну, это так перспектива а, с коронавирусом, пока вы понимаете, мы пока ничего не можем делать, то есть с этим периодом. Но это все, конечно. Планах. Амар, большое спасибо за вашу презентацию. Давайте перейдем к некоторым вопросам, okay. которые уже да, у нас появляются. И вот первый вопрос был. How security policy works in framework of 5G usage? А, это вопрос был от нашего, да, вот в Фейсбуке. How security policy, how, how does security policy work in framework of 5G usage? So, as, yes, as I understood, uh, he, uh, the question is about that 5G will, will be available to everyone, means uh, anyone will reap the benefits of 5G, means the good people and the bad people both will have 5G, both will have uh, high speed internet. And uh, uh, it was uh, an interesting, uh, you know, question uh, raised a couple of years ago, that people were saying that we are sitting in our cities and uh, we cannot download a video. And these people who are living in mountains, the terrorists like Taliban's and ISIS, they are uploading high speed, you know, uh, HD videos on internet. How, how they are doing this means they had more advanced technology. So when the 5G will come, definitely the security threats will uh, increase. Fortunately, in all the Central Asian countries, the uh, Ministry of uh, Interior Affairs or the other law enforcement agencies, they have the departments of cybersecurity. Some uh, individuals, enthusiasts also monitor their borders like uh, individual specialists. Out of their patriotism, they can monitor uh, the, the internet borders of their country. But uh, of course, it, it will be uh, a challenge. Government has a plus that they have more resources. By utilizing those resources and by starting right now, they can uh, overcome on many challenges. Uh, I cannot predict that how bad it can happen, but for one thing, I am very much sure that the technology will be available to everyone undiscriminately. 
So that's why we need to think about it in advance. Thank you. Uh, what, what, um, so you are, as, as I understand, you analyze the digital law of all Central Asian countries. Could yes. you see the differences of uh, digital law development in, in every Central Asian countries? Do we have differences in the development process? Yes, some, some of uh, us are at very advanced stage. For example, Kazakhstan, they have done uh, tremendous work in the area of uh, legal tech and uh, fintech, the Astana Financial Center. And, uh, you know, uh, in Uzbekistan, they have a full-fledged uh, ministerial uh, bodies who are uh, making uh, rules and regulations related to the new in innovation technologies. Uh, similarly, uh, if we talk about uh, Kyrgyzstan, in the beginning of this year, there was a law passed by um, Kyrgyz parliament. It was about the uh, electronic documents. And basically, it was a proposal of Eurasian Economic Union. So they incorporated this international law into their local uh, legal system. It, it is about uh, electronic documents. Today, we are discussing about the, uh, you know, um, about, which is which is the hot topic uh, today in uh, Kyrgyzstan about the information security, uh, mm -hmm. the presence of individuals on the internet. So in in Tajikistan they are working on uh, smart city projects. Most of the things are being done on the accessibility, but there is a law. Uh, uh, recently they have uh, discussed about the electronic signature, e-wallet, uh, digital payments, and so on. So I would, I would say that when it comes to the digital law in uh, Central Asian region, most of the laws are related to the accessibility. They are talking about legal tech. They are not talking about technology law. It means they bring a technology and then they try to you know, incorporate it into our lives. But uh, the tech law, which I am saying, I am saying that working on the rules and regulations so that whenever a new technology comes, you don't have to think about new laws. You should have a base for for the new technology. Yes, so in Central Asian region, most of the work uh, in legal sphere, which is being done, it is related to legal tech, but uh, very less has been done on tech law. Yes. Okay, thank you. And the next question, what are the obstacles to the digital law development and new technology law in Central Asia? Uh, many obstacles, first of all, the mindset. People often ask me that, uh, first of all, you are a foreigner. And uh, secondly, you studied abroad and uh, you are talking about uh, technology and law or tech law in a region where less than 10% have accessibility to the internet. Right. So first of all, we need to change our mindset because uh, technology is not something uh, which you can compare with the other, other uh, uh, things which need uh, you know 10 or 20 years to develop. In a blink of an eye, a new technology can come. For example, right now in the COVID-19 era, the whole traditional business has shifted to e-commerce or people who still operate in traditional business, they are thinking to make it uh, a domain of e-commerce. Similarly, there are many other things, many other examples can be quoted. For example, uh, when we were shifting our, uh, uh, you know, business from traditional barter system to the organizations and people said that let's make different organizations. People said that we don't need to make different organizations because barter system uh, exchange of goods is doing perfectly well. But uh, today there are so many examples uh, uh, so many problems related to organizational structures. For example, people are talking about uh, corporate social responsibility. People are talking about social business. People are saying that we shouldn't care only about money. We should care about people also. So these are the things which they could think beforehand. Or uh, you can take an example of uh, environment. For example, when uh, uh, the things were starting, when the business was starting, no one cared about environment. And now everyone is caring about environment that we, we need to think about environment and, and the companies are required to, you know, give a report beforehand uh, that their company will not damage to the environment. So in, in, in the case of technology as well, the first obstacle, I think that uh, we need to uh, take our people into confidence that this is something which we need right now and we should start right now. Uh, secondly, there are things related to the capacity building which depend on the resources, but individuals like you or the organization, uh, uh, 
different organizations who are the sponsor of this uh, national legal forum they are contributing their part so we need more people like this uh, who can uh, you know support the government when it comes to the resources and uh, hopefully i mean we should stay hopeful and uh, in in a couple of year we will see the positive impact of this so the so first of all we need to uh, emphasize on 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 this thing that this is something which we need we have to understand the gravity of situation and then we have to contribute uh, our part by sharing resources in, in any capacity uh, and uh, and that's it i think yes okay. these are these are the big challenges i'm a, i'm impressed you have so very deep knowledge in all fields of digital <laughs> tech law it's i'm really surprised uh, uh, what I, do you think of about artificial intelligence do you think that could artificial intelligence replace lawyers policemen teachers what do you think about the future of artificial intelligence uh, there there are you know many misconceptions about it when mm -hmm. uh, people talk about artificial intelligence they usually think about uh, journal artificial intelligence so there are journal artificial intelligence or the other type you, you can say that specific artificial intelligence for example we have computers which are loaded with specific artificial intelligence for example uh, your mobile phone show you the map when you drive or uh, the, you can ask questions from a siri so they are they they have a specific function but when it comes to the journal artificial intelligence which can do multiple things at the same time uh, it it is too early to predict about it but uh, there are different other types of artificial intelligence for example they if uh, you have three four specific artificial intelligence bodies their collective work can be much more uh, you know superior than an individual or two three artificial general intelligence body can perform much better than a single human so in this case we need to think about the regulations and ethic uh, fortunately there are many scholars who are working on this in the area of ai ethics and regulation many countries have their full fledged program on ai ethics and regulation good example is european union doing very well and basically this european union who actually formally discussed the concept of uh, digital personhood which i earlier, earlier proposed that uh, we can have physici skillisa juridici skillisa and sifra vielisa so the european union is formally discussing about it uh, so uh, artificial intelligence i think that uh, can replace a human uh it it is a little bit earlier to predict but when we talk about uh, the things which humans are doing right now including some of the jobs uh it is actually happening in in some capacities for example there are very sophisticated chatbots there are very sophisticated uh, computer programs who can predict the outcome of a uh, for legal case i mean the predictability rate is even more than 70% you put the data of the facts of the uh, of the case and he can predict because it is all about the analysis of the big data and it is much more faster than an individual human so uh, it doesn't mean that uh, we will never have those robots who can perform much better uh, when it comes to the individual tasks we have robots who are performing much better than human and uh, when it comes to the general artificial intelligence then it is a little bit uh, earlier to predict so there is a there is a theory that by the year 2040 we will have a robot general artificial loaded with general artificial intelligence who can uh, perform much better than an ordinary human and one of my last questions probably uh what what impact do digital technology have on the development of law in general so it is the future first of all we have to accept this thing that it is the future of uh, all the professions including legal profession uh, people will be uh, you know people will feel face the consequences they are uh, already facing the consequences the, the the juniors and the associates they can feel feel uh, you know this thing that previously they have to go through so many other so many books to find a case law but now you can just quickly do it on on computer and uh, many other things are uh, when the question comes to the accessibility is already being done by the robots so Uh, i think that uh, it will be better for the legal scholars to start understanding the technology many problems emerge 
when people just simply even the lawyer said that no 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 it cannot happen and they say it just because they don't know about this they don't they think that if they don't know then this thing does not exist actually that thing exist but they don't know so it it will be much more easier for us to be compatible in future if we will start uh, uh, digging into the technology as early we will start that early we will be able to compete the market market will become very competitive yes and in the begin in the early morning some colleagues were talking about uh, coder lawyers or digital lawyers or or uh, you know the tech lawyers uh, this this is uh, which is already being discussed it is happening in certain capacities in different parts of the world to be competitive we need to you know start studying technology and uh, this is this is the only way we can survive other otherwise otherwise uh, um, a machine will replace at least us because our job is based on uh, data analysis even you know that there are robots who can uh, mimic the emotions <laughs> so uh, emotions can also be automated uh, so that's why we, we need to start right now yes just right now <laughs> yes so who are with us you have to start just now after our webinar try to find more information about it law tech law digital law and be ready for the next day right yes maybe it was and the last one amar what can you recommend for current law students for current lawyers for i mean for lawyers what what should they do to be I mean, to be modern, to be uh, yes. So, uh, the the irony be... of yes, the I irony of our le our uh, legal education system of this uh, Central Asian region is. I'm saying I can say because I am the product of this region. You know, <laughs> I, I am not saying this as an as an outsider. I studied here, uh, like these uh, these um, last students are studying right now. So the irony is that we have a very orthodox approach. I mean, we start from uh, classics and then we come to the, to the you know, contemporary issues. Uh, this is because of, uh, I would say, please forgive me because of the teachers as well. Uh, but uh, at, at this point, there is, there is no monopoly of anyone on knowledge. Knowledge is available freely and accessible. You, you can just go on YouTube and you can find anything. There was a time when you had to go to the teacher and only teacher could give you the knowledge, but there is no monopoly of the teacher on, on the knowledge. Everything is available. So if you think that your institution or your teachers are teaching you by using very orthodox and traditional methodologies, you can start your own uh, studies by using the contemporary uh, you know, resources available. Internet is every, every are in anyone's hand so by utilizing these available uh, you know technologies you can learn more about the technology so theory you can you can you can classics are also very important classics you can learn from uh, your university and for contemporary issues which is very important to do to dig deep into the case law you can uh, use the technology which is already in your hand so don't rely only on university or don't rely only on uh, what you see on internet just try to connect the dot with each other and slowly slowly you know uh, you, you you cannot do it in one day it takes time but as i mentioned earlier as early you will start slowly 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 it will be the snowball effect after five years, when you will graduate, you will have huge, uh, you know, information in your mind about everything, and you will be able to, you know, have a bird eye view of everything. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Amar. Спасибо большое, Amar. Это было очень интересно, познавательно. Даже для меня, да, это было вообще безумно замечательно. Спасибо вам, Amar. Спасибо. Да, я надеюсь, вы будете в Кыргызстане, мы сможем это более подробно обсудить. Мы вообще планирую, и я очень хотела бы, да, чтобы мы проводили бы больше бы конференцию, масштабные yes. конференции по вопросам цифрового и технологического. Of course, вопроса. we can organize a different uh, training, seminars, symposium by inviting other universities. Now, in the COVID-19 world, we have uh, already experimented. Like this is this is a huge achievement. I would say that uh, organizing this type of uh, you know, big forum. Uh, logistically, it, 
uh, it is it is very difficult but credit goes to you in the same format we can organize other uh, seminars training symposium by involving other academicians and students from other central asian countries thank yes you. yes okay yeah, thank you very much once again yeah, thank you very much thank you for being with us it was really it was our honor and pleasure my pleasure you. Yes. thank you very much yes, thank you bye да, и на этом наше интервью закончилось. Спасибо. До свидания.